Hi everyone, it's Bren here and welcome back to this week's garden update where among other things I will be showing you um, a new project that I started this week and um, how I like to display flowers in my house other than just using a vase. So let's get into it now. I'm so excited. It's because of what's happening up here on the orange tree. The fruit is starting to change color. It's only a matter of weeks now before I'll be able to harvest oranges again. This tree is underplanted with nasturtiums, which is an edible plant where you can eat the leaves and the flowers. I particularly like one of these nasturtium plants that's blooming down here. The flowers are so unusual. They have this kind of light yellow petals with a splash of orange. I'm going to pick a few of these flowers now and show you an alternative way that you can display them in your home. I went inside and I grabbed a clear shallow bowl which I filled up with water. Then you just remove the stems from the flowers like this and then all you need to do is float them in the water. I'm not putting too many in here. I'll give them enough room that they can just kind of float around and my kids can have a little play with them when the bowl's on the kitchen table. This week I made a start on creating a new garden bed which you can see there on the right hand side. All I basically did was I laid down some cardboard over on top of the grass to make a start on these new beds. The cardboard will kill the grass off eventually in a few months. You can see there this cardboard's just some old pizzas from some takeaway we had. And just for the moment, I put some sugar cane mulch over the top. But eventually, I'm hoping to get a lot more um, manures and composts ordered in, as well as bark, which what I have over here in this garden bed, because these will add a lot more nutrients and minerals to the soil than um, just the sugar cane mulch. But um, I just have to make do with what I can get at the moment. So I still have quite a bit of work to do before this bed is anywhere near completion. But laying down that cardboard gives you an idea of what it will look like. And I do like having a curved edge. I think it's a bit less formal. Um, it goes really well with my cottage style garden. Plus it creates a bit of a pathway, which is what I'm trying to do here, leading it over to this section of the garden, over to the archway, and it puts a focal point, I guess you would say, maybe on this entryway into this section. I'm now standing up in the area that you've just seen, up where all those cosmos flowers are, looking down towards the raised garden beds, to give you an idea of what it will look like from this angle. I'm back over at the raised garden bed area to show you that I made a start on planting in here this week. Taking a step back um, to show you this bed, I put in two stakes, they're the tomato stakes, tied some twine up on them just to make a very simple, inexpensive um, trellis. And this is here because down at the base I put in some of those snow peas which I showed you last week. I sow the seeds into these toilet roll holders and I've planted the entire thing. This will um, break down eventually and it won't harm the plant at all. It will just grow up nice and healthy and strong. It's looking pretty good at the moment. 
I just noticed this one here looks like the stem has broken. You can see it just there where it's bent over. I might need to replace this one. And that is a reason why I always have spare plants because things like this happen. Um, garden pests eat your seedlings. Stems get broken. They get dug out by birds. You always, if you have a backup, then, you know, it just really helps and you're less disappointed. Here are some of my backup plants. So all I'll need to do today is pull out that other one and replace it with this one here. And it's pretty easy and straightforward and a lot less, less stress than having to re-sow more seeds. Any spares that I have, I can always give away to family and friends so they won't go to waste. I'm back over at the garden bed to show you what else I've planted in here. Along the edge, I have a whole row of violas. There's one here with a little flare on it. Um, now, I still have a bit of space to go um, at the far side of this garden bed. I haven't quite decided what to put in there and um, some plants along here too. But um, it feels good to have made a start getting things going before winter arrives. Directly across from where we just were just there in this garden bed, we'll take a look at what's growing in here. I've got another beautiful annual plant called Elobilia. I planted these in a row with the hopes that eventually they'll grow and spill over the edge and kind of soften that metallic look. Directly behind those plants is a row of lettuce, just a mixed um, pack of lettuce, a few different varieties there. Then there's a row of celery and behind that there are a few leeks. I also notice that in between these plants are some little tomato seedlings. I see this a lot in my um, autumn garden where I have summer plants um, you know like seeds germinating in autumn because it's still you know, warm enough for that to happen. But unfortunately, these will never come to anything because by the time they get a bit larger, the frost will arrive and kill them off. I won't be getting any tomatoes from these which are growing outside. But I wonder if I was to dig some of these up and pot them up, um, if, you know, anything would come of them if I put them in the greenhouse over winter. Do you know what? I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to give it a go um, as a little experiment, a bit of fun, see what happens and I'll keep you updated. We'll now have a quick look at what else is happening over here in the raised garden beds. There's even more flowers appearing on these um, self-seeded Mexican sunflowers and yes I'm standing on a stool to try and get a better angle. <laughs> I spotted this flower opening on my passion fruit. I'm still getting some lovely flower heads on this dahlia although the stems are quite weak now. You can see there um, the plant is coming to um, its end for this year. I'll have to go and cut back all of these right down to the base down there, give it a good mulch and fortunately where I live I'm able to overwinter the tubers in the ground. There are a lot of borage plants which have self-seeded amongst the pathways. I'm going to leave most of these here because the pollinators, the bees absolutely go crazy for these and they're pretty hardy. These plants will continue to grow now right through to the end of autumn and even throughout winter if we don't get any kind of harsh frost. The seedlings are growing well and um, I've already shown you these. So quick look, um, there's some beetroots and some turnips and another plant that I put in here is this which is the red mustard green. 
this is quite spicy to eat but it's nice chopping some of it up in small pieces and adding it to a salad but <laughs> some of you might mightn't agree with me but my favorite thing about this plant is in springtime when it starts to bolt and set flowers and that's when it shines the most it is absolutely the most beautiful thing ever it has the clusters of these little um, yellow flowers and it really livens up this part of the garden I'll show you one last plant in here. So as I've mentioned probably for the last few weeks now, I've still got lots of capsicums. But down here, this is a chili plant which my friend gave me. He was given two plants by an elderly lady. Um, I've got no idea what the name of this chili plant is, but I have quite a few forming now all over it. And how good is it when you get a plant that is both edible and ornamental. I'm in a different part of the garden now to take a look at some really long beans. I've shown you the red variety before but these are green noodle beans and um, they can get quite long up to 60 centimeters. It's an Asian variety and they are called a few different names like yard long beans, asparagus beans and Chinese long beans and this is nothing compared to how long they get. They're really nice to snack on when I wander around the garden like what I'm doing now. Let's have a quick look around the front. At the base of the side gate, the chrysanthemums here are starting to open up. This was one of my bargain plants that I purchased a few years ago for about $2. The flowers had all finished blooming and it wasn't looking good at all. I picked it up really cheap and every year it rewards me now with these beautiful big blooms. I potted up a few more seedlings this week. I've also got this lovely dahlia flowering um, which my friend gave me a couple of years ago. She um, grew from seeds that she saved from a plant. It's quite unique and it's doing quite well here in this semi-shaded area. This was the patch of chrysanthemums that I showed you last week. I think there was only one open and look how many more now have made an appearance. Underneath this camellia tree, a lot of the plants that I put in here are starting to naturalize. And the one that I'm absolutely the most excited about is down here. It's the Australian native Viola. The place where I've seen this growing its best is in our local community nursery. It's growing in their hot houses underneath the propagation tables all over the ground. And when I saw it there, I mean, that was my dream to kind of have it all over my garden naturally filling in little spaces like it's starting to do over here. Hanging here on this tree is an old bird cage which I picked up for free and on it I put some of this um, old man's beard air plant which is finally starting to grow. Usually it all disappears very quickly and I discover where it's gone in winter when I'm cutting back some um, foliage and bushes and trees it's usually used by the birds as part of their nest which I don't mind them using at all but it is nice to see some of it growing here on this garden feature and over here in the 15 meter garden bed I have these white and yellow mums and it wouldn't be my summer garden without more of this amaranth love lies bleeding. I've still got a huge pile of compost to move. I want to try and get a bit of that done today. I hope you enjoy the little look around and I'll see you again next Friday.